you to open the ears and the hearts of your people to hear your voice, not the voice of Carl Johnson. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, we are familiar with a phrase that says, the bigger the better. But God is saying, this morning, bigger is not always better. But God is showing us not only is bigger not always better, many times bigger isn't even good. How many times have you heard the doctor say, you'll get better if you get some of that weight off of you? You're too big. Amen. Have you ever heard the doctor say that? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. right. Amen. We're going to look at a couple of biblical examples of bigger, not particularly better. First one is David and Goliath. You know, Israel was assailed by the forces of the Philistines, an army of giants. Israel and the Philistine army stood on opposite mountaintops, facing one another. The word said a giant named Goliath hollered out to Israel. Why do you bring a whole army against one person? Have you nobody in your camp that can challenge me? One translation read that Goliath roared from the top of the mountain. Said he roared so loud that the mountain shook. Now that was a big sound, wasn't it? Now this huge man with a voice that big that shook mountains was felled by a little ruddy boy with a slingshot. Bigger definitely was not better in that not only was Goliath bigger even with a big voice, we often think the louder the more we are, more right we are. Loud doesn't carry any weight when there are no facts to support that, does it? You just say, opening your big mouth. You're just bellowing your own opinion with nothing support to support it. Sometimes we, we think we talk loud and with authority and look strange. We are right and, and scoring points. But we are often loud with no facts to back up our loudness. We're simply strangely st just uh, stating our opinion. And often that opinion is no factual basis. Because you can holler loudly doesn't make it true. Just because you can talk loud. Sometimes we think if we pray in a very loud voice, God hears us. Church, you can whisper a prayer. And he hears it. Nobody has to hear it but you and him. He hears it just as if you had bellowed like Goliath. Amen. You can shout out your opinion with a loud voice. Some tiny voice person will shout it, will, will shoot it down with a slingshot. Elijah gives us a vivid picture of bigger, not better. Remember when Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal to prove the living God was superior to Baal. He then slew all 300 of Baal's prophets. Jezebel found out and set out to kill Elijah. Yes. He ran until he found a cave mm -hmm. and went into it to get away from Jezebel. And an angel came to him and said, go stand on the side of the mountain and God will speak to you. And Elijah did so. And a mighty wind came and tore the mountain into rocks. But God wasn't in that wind. Then a great earthquake shook the mountain. Surely God must be in that big commotion and shaking, but God wasn't in it. 
Then the mountain was set on fire. He thought God must be in this great blaze. But God wasn't in the fire. After all that settled down, a still small voice spoke to him. My Lord. Sometimes God speaks to us in a small voice. Amen. And we yes. think that's not God because we're looking for something big and loud. Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise and God is whispering to us and giving us direction. Yes. Amen. You know, I want to look at uh, another one. Judges, turn to Judges. I know you're saying, wondering when he's going to get to a scripture. Judges chapter 6. Verses 1, start at verse 1. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of, of Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel because the Midianites, the children of Israel, made for themselves the dens, the caves, and strongholds which are in the mountains. So it was whenever Israel had, had sown, whatever they had sown, the Midianites would come up and the people of the east would come up against them. Then they would encamp against them to destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. For they would come up with their livestock, yes. coming in as numerous as locusts. Both they and their camels were without number, and they would enter the land and destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to challenge to the children of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you. I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But you have not obeyed my voice. You know there are times when we are willfully disobedient. Do you know that we are willfully sometimes? We know we are being disobedient. Yes. Amen. yes. We intend to be disobedient. We intend to not do that, what God is saying. It's not an accident. We understand what God is saying to us. As, he, as, as if he doesn't know any better. Even then, God will at times carry us over the troubles that our disobedience brought us into. Yes. Then there are times God will set us down right in the middle of tribulations. Here's one of those times. He said they were disobedient and he delivered them into the hands of the Midianites. Now, Just be patient with me here. Take your time, amen. Now, delivering them in the hands of it does not mean that he picked them up and just set them right down uh, for the Midianites. What it means, he removed his arm of protection, making them easy targets for the enemy. And that's what he'll do to us sometimes. He just... just he just won't protect us. And, and he'll let our disobedience take control of us. Yes, amen. In this episode, God showed how bigger was not always better. He's not always talking about big in physical scope and size. Sometimes he means a person's position or importance or even his experience. In choosing Gideon to, be, to defeat the Midianites, God really was, looked like God really wet his pants there. 
Gideon was not in the same mold as other great biblical leaders. Moses led with a, a kind of majesty and grandeur never heard before or after. And Joshua was a great warrior. Even as a boy, Joshua was brave. Yes, amen. You know, when uh, Moses sent spies over into the land, Joshua and Caleb went over as little boys. The grown men came back and said, we can't take the land because there's giants over there. And uh, but Joshua and Caleb said, yes, we can. We yes, can go amen. and possess that land because God said so. Yes, amen. Hmm. Now, but Gideon here was a kind of a fraidy cat. He was down threshing wheat down in an old wine press out of the sight of the Midianites so they wouldn't take his wheat. God told him to go into the city and tear down the altars of Baal. He did so, but he waited until it was dark where nobody could see him. Now, I'm not knocking that because I probably would have done the same thing. I would have waited to wait until it got dark so nobody would see me. I wouldn't let all them, all them idolaters see me tearing down their altars. Get him, and then Gideon himself told God, I'm, I'm the wrong one. I'm the least of a very unimportant family here. My family is not the Rockefellers. It's not the uh, Vanderbilts or the Fords, the Carnegies or the Kennedys. My, my family is uh, Joe and Mamie Green. <laughs> God said, I don't care, church. I thank God. I thank God that uh, I'm no more than, than a Johnson. But I thank God I'm a part of the family of God. And that's enough right there. Amen. Gideon eventually agreed to obey God after all sorts of hemming and hawing and mental gyrations going back and forth. He went out and got him an army of 32,000 men. He felt good about himself with that. But God whittled it down to 300. Yes, he did. To face a great Midian army. 300 is not that many. And God said to him, now, Gideon, that's too many. He said, that is too many. He said, I can't let you win with that many. Because you'll think you did it yourself. He said, I want the credit for it, and you're giving yourself the credit if I let you win with that. Paul told the uh, Corinthian church, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. It is him. Not, your, not how many armies you can get together. It's God who causes us to, tri to triumph. I remember Dr. Juanita Manning when she came here. She preached to us, little is much in God's hands. And it was proven to us when we, God used so few people to pay off a mortgage of thousands of dollars. Yes, amen. Now don't worry, I'm not going there. I've been told many times not to go there, and I'm not. I'm only talking about how good God, 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 was to us. And from so little, he got so much from us that we didn't know we had ourselves. Amen. You see, he's saying bigger is not always better. Sometimes bigger can be a hindrance. I thank God, you know, that church, I want to tell you, he told me when I came, when I passed this church, he said, Pastor Carl, I don't want you to confuse a large membership with my pleasure with that church. He said, there's no connection between the two. Because Satan will fill up your church and give you all the headaches to go with it. 
But he said, Satan will fill your church. It's easy for him. If he'll fill your church up with members, all he has to do is get a hold of the pastor. And then he's got thousands of members. Get a hold of, and that's what he's done in a number of churches. Huge churches. But he got a hold of the head of the church. And the tail followed. And he said, don't worry about it if you don't have a lot of members here. That doesn't mean I'm not pleased with you. There are times I'm pleased with that church down there with, with 15 members, more than the one over on the other side of town with 3,000. Yes, amen. Praise God. Yes, Lord. He said, because that 15, that 15 members, they're doing my will. And many times that 3,000 is doing their own will. Praise God. Amen. Well, God is good. Yes, sir. yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes sir.